once you have completed the Taikogi Tower, the Dordung Cave becomes accessible. However, we aren't quite ready to go through the Dordung Cave. Instead, let's make our way over to the Fairy Pool, which was accessible after I beat Hanyu Forest. We have frozen the fountain of life! Oh, that was good! We have made evil! Let's bring the darkness down! What the hell was that? I love how this game just tosses in these characters and assumes we know what's going on. It's not even like what they did with Gibdo. I mean, with Gibdo, at least he's a he's a typical standard Zelda enemy or a Zelda boss. These witches are just stereotypical witches. And there's three of them. Sort of reminds me of the three witches from Shakespeare's Macbeth. You know, the double double toil and trouble, fire burning, cauldron bubble. Ugh. And I also love how this area goes dark and you have to use your lantern. I mean, you can see the sun over the mountains and these witches throw fire. Don't you think that would light up the room? All our lovely evil ruined! No! Ah! Yay, we have freed the fairies who were apparently captured by the three witches. We're free! You saved us. Here's a life heart and some fairy dust. Have some water of life. After yet another strangely disturbing cutscene, you'll get a heart container, increasing your overall health to five full heart containers. Hit the Triforce symbol to return to the overworld map, and the Go Beyond ship is now accessible. You could go there right now, actually. Or you can head on back to Sakato since we got the fairy dust, but I'm gonna head to the Dordung Cave first. You'll need at least two ropes in the Dordung Cave, so make sure you have that before coming here. There are a couple new enemies in the Dordung Cave, the first of which are these flying creatures, which I refer to as Kargarok. Yeah, Kargarok didn't appear in the Zelda series until the Wind Waker, and then later again in Twilight Princess. But this is the Wand of Gamelon, and a lot of these creatures didn't have official names. So they fly, they're colorful, I'm calling them Kargarok. Just progress to the left side of the screen, as you can see I just beat up two Dodongos and a couple of Kargaroks, but they really could gang up on you, and one way to get through them is using the Power Glove, since it will destroy all the enemies within a small radius. At the far left of the screen, enter the cave, and inside the cave it's dark, so you'll have to use your lantern. There is also one more new enemy in this cave, and they are in the form of these Gliok heads. Gliok heads were in the original Legend of Zelda during the boss battle with Gliok, and all they really did was they floated around the room and they shot fireballs at you. Well, that's basically the exact same thing as they do here in the Wand of Gamelon except they only appear on the sides of the walls and they just move in up and down patterns. You could defeat them, some of them are out of your range so you can't really get to them, so you could defeat them or just avoid them. This jump could be rather difficult, you could use a rope from the lower floor if that helps. Over here there are two rocks and then there's a patch of ice above you. You actually want to get up to the ice and you can't actually jump up to it, so you'll need to use rope. Jump on up, and here we have Gliok. As, as you can see, it's just a couple hits with your sword, and Gliok will be defeated, leaving a heat crystal behind. You could also use just a single bomb to blow up Gliok, or even the power glow. Afterwards, jump on over, hit the Triforce symbol to return to the overworld map, and the Dodomai Palace is now accessible. However, I am first going to head back to Sakato. There's several new things we can do in Sakato that we weren't able to do before. Notably, we now have the fairy dust for that one woman, and also two characters, the chef in Taikogi Tower and the fisherman from Ahituru, both told us they'll see us in Sakato, and they gave us keys to locked doors, which are basically houses in this town. Uh, first things first, I'm just going through the town and defeating some Daira 
and some Arpagos collecting some rubies since I'll need to make a stop at the merchant shop. But the third house here, this is where the chef from Taikogi Tower is in. So you can now enter it and speak to the chef. Your friend Link could eat ten of these. <laughs> at least. Ha! The Arpagos will die for them. Man, this chef is a weird character. So after going through Taikogi Tower to save him, all it really surmounts to is him giving you a loaf of bread, the most useless item in the entire game. All it does is exactly what he says. The Arpacos will die for it. They crave it. Whenever you see an Arpacos, you can just toss the loaf of bread and the Arpacos will completely ignore Princess Zelda. They'll swoop down to the ground and they'll try to eat the loaf of bread. That's basically it. It serves as an item that distracts Arpagos for oh about 10 to 15 seconds and then it disappears. And that's it. You can't pick it up, you can't use it a second time. Considering we already have the flute, which works not only on Arpagos but on all flying enemies, this item is useless. If I'm really trying to reason it out, the only use I can even think of would be in the second part of Sakato in that house where we got the Arpagos egg since we wouldn't have the flute yet. If you recall that house was just flooded with Arpagos so we can use the bread so we can easily navigate through the house. Even then it's useless because once you move up the house you go the bread goes off screen of which then it has no use at all. Anyway here I am back at the merchant shop and I'm stocking up on both rope and on lantern oil. You could get a couple bombs, but you really don't need many bombs for the remainder of the game actually, because the power glove basically serves as a substitute. So you could get a couple bombs, but mainly you're concerned with rope and lantern oil. And actually, if you buy enough of them right now, this will be the last time you have to come to the shop. And once you're through with the rest of Sakato, you won't actually have to come back to this town at all. So our next objective is at the last house in this first part of town. If you recall, there's a woman there who wanted fairy dust to make us a magic cloak. Well, we got fairy dust from the fairies at the fairy pool, so now we can give the fairy dust to the woman to get the magic cloak. Oh good! There! Now you can sneak up and give a monster a good shot before he sees you. Man, that woman's eyes just freak me out. Anyway, so she gives you the magic cloak, and this will allow Zelda to go invisible for a short period of time. You'll still take damage from like falling rocks or falling spikes, but regular enemies won't be able to see you, and thus they won't attack you. So you can walk right by them, or right through them actually. Don't use it too often though, because it does use a lot of rubies. In this house you can see the portrait on the wall, and it's actually a picture of the mayor. The same mayor we saved in Taikogi Tower. However, he's not even in this house, and he's not back in Taikogi Tower. He basically just disappears from this game, never to be seen again. Anyway, enter the last house, and you'll find the fisherman who we saved in Ahitaru. Ought to do it works pretty good you could have actually come here right after you completed Ahitaro and if you spoke with the fisherman then he would have told you that he changed his occupation and he is now a blacksmith and he asks you to bring him a heat crystal well since we got a heat crystal from defeating Gliok in Dordon cave he takes that heat crystal and forges your power sword into what basically is the level 3 sword. The level 3 sword acts just as the power sword with the major difference being that even when you don't have full health you can still shoot your sword with power. You can still shoot the beam blade and uh, this is awesome. It makes the game a lot easier and uh, well dare I say it makes the game more fun. That's a or interpretation. Anyway, I'm going to enter this house again to talk to the chef just to get a second loaf of bread. 
Your friend Link could eat ten of these. <laughs> At least. Ha! The Arpagos will die for them. You don't really need to get another loaf of bread. I just sort of wanted to get one just so I can fill up my inventory. It's just something with me with Zelda games. I like to get everything 100%. I don't like missing anything. So for Wand of Gamelon, what that really means is filling up your inventory. So in order to do so, I got another loaf of bread, even though I'm never going to use it again. Anyway, that basically does it for Sakado, so we can leave the town. You'll never have to come back here unless you have to get some more items from the shop. I did get more rubies throughout my quest in Sakado, and I have uh, 46 rubies as you'll see in a second. But I want to save those because there's going to be items that use rubies later on. I have 17 rope, 16 lantern oil, and 6 bombs, and that's good enough for me moving forward. So join me for the next video.